Greetings. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor, brought to you by Heart and Soul Broadcasting Services. I go beyond the headlines and beyond the sensational. Today I'm in conversation with Victoria Ngumalo, information technology professional and gender advocate. If you enjoy this conversation, remember to subscribe, to like, and share. Victoria Vicky Mumalo, welcome to In Conversation with Trevor. Thank you so much for having me, Trevor. It's such an honor to be here. We, 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 it's an honor to us because you've had to fly from Wawulawai to come and spend time with us. So we don't take that for granted, Vicky. Thank you. Yeah, well, Trevor. Thank F you. Fantastic. So, Vicky, you are founder and executive director of Girls in STEM Trust. You are founder and training director of Digital Learning Center. You are the Technical and Innovation Director for the Bulawayo Tech Hub. That's, that's huge. I mean, there's lots of responsibilities there. How, how do you divide your time between these responsibilities that you have? Work-life balance, Trevor, mm -hmm. really important. And um, the journey of how all this happened really wasn't intentional. Uh, so there's always a story behind the story. Let's have the story. <laughs> <laughs> so... Girls in STEM Trust has probably existed, you know, for about 15 years, for as long as I've been an information technology professional, um, but on paper has existed for five years. So I found myself gravitating towards always wanting to put myself in spaces where technology is being discussed. And as time goes, you begin to realize there's very few that look like you, and I mean women, right? So I began to wonder to say, but we're churning out all these graduates. Where do they go? Where do the female graduates in, in the STEM subjects go? Um, is it that they get swallowed up in the, in the back office somewhere? Or are the and, long and the STEM hours? subject, uh, Vicky, for yeah. those who don't know out yes. there, what are, they, what are the STEM subjects? Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Okay. So you could pretty much be anything from a science teacher to a robotician to an astronaut, really. And all of that falls within within STEM, all right? So my focal area is technology, and mm. I believe that technology underpins all the facets of STEM. So there's a technology for science, a technology for engineering, a technology for maths. So um, pretty much, like I said, I was gravitating towards yeah. always being in those spaces where technology is being discussed, but not very many women are there. And technology affects everybody. Um, you know, the digitization of the space that we're in currently. And also when you look at the, the scheme of things, FOIR, now conversations about 5IR, and then not very many women, you know, taking the lead and also having their voices being heard. Remember, be slow with us, eh? Yeah. Because uh, four, five <laughs> out of whatever. What is that? <laughs> Thank Please, you, Trevor. Please be gentle with us. <laughs> Right. So for IR, we're speaking about the fourth industrial revolution, Trevor. So basically, when we speak about the fourth industrial revolution, common sense dictates that there must have been a first, right? Mm -hmm. And so typically, uh, a revolution lasts between 50 to 100 years. And that's basically the gold standard for what life is, uh, you know, globally, right, according to society. You're so right. we all conform to whatever is the revolution of the time. So where we are now, we are in what is called the cyber physical um, revolution. So basically, things are happening in cyberspace. Mm. And I'm sure you see this. Mm. Uh, mobile technologies, you're moving from 4G to 5G. Uh, artificial intelligence now, doing things for you, you know, Internet of Things. So this is what I, I speak about to say all these things are affecting daily lives. And where are the women, you know, in all of this? Are they innovating things that would, you know, sort of cater to them in the near future? So this is why I was saying I was gravitating towards all these things, but not knowing that I'm putting myself in spaces where I'm encouraging other women to come in and join the fold, um, and also encouraging them to take up studies, you know, that involve technology. So this is why I say Girls in STEM Trust existed way before its time on paper, until eventually I decided to then say, hey, what if we get together as a group of technology veterans and then say, look, let's have a formalized structure of all these activities we've been doing over the years and sort of move forward, 
you know, with that. And so this is now the birth of girls in STEM Trump. Girls so, in STEM so, Trump. Uh, sort of to uh, yeah, sure. thing. So w- what do you find to be the hurdles? So you're saying you are in a room. There are not many people that look like you, meaning not many women in yeah. the in the room. Yeah. What? Why? Why is that so? Why are women not taking young girls, women not taking up STEM sub- subjects? Can we get there? And what are we doing to unlock that space? We can't be what we can't see. All oh, right. It's 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 as simple as that. So wow, that's powerful. Though. Yeah. We we can't be what we can't see. So when you have other women role models doing the same thing, having gone through that journey of saying, I did a, an A-level uh, a subject combination of this, this, and this, and it had computer science in it, and then I progressed to do, for example, informatics, and then from there, this is what I did. I moved into the field of data analytics. I became you know, a data science and so on. If you don't see it, how can you even begin mm. to conceptualize or fathom it, right? Mm. So that already, so we need more female role models, more female mentors sharing their stories, um, hand-holding, you know, literal hand-holding these girls to say, hey, the, your subject combinations are these, you know, progress with them in this manner and follow this path and, you know, that sort of thing. And then also mindset. Mindset is a big thing, uh, Trevor. Mm. If I keep telling you that it can't be done, you will believe that it mm. can't be done. And a lot of the women... Girls can do this. Yes, women girl, can do this. You know, why should you even be here? You know, and already the technology field, the STEM field, is it's male-dominated, you know, less than 30% world over. Of scientists are women. What of the other 70%? You know? So, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot that's involved there. And so what we're now doing is then... Anything else? So we yeah. talk about if what, what you, you can't be, what you can't see. Yes. There's the mindset. Anything yes. else that's stopping the girl child, the young woman, stepping into STEM space? Yeah. There's still another aspect to it, and that is um, to get to the school in the first place. So you will find that again, uh, you know, the, the society and the culture will then say, oh, well, you know, when things get tight and things are tight, when they get tight, it's, yeah, we're going to have to cut your dreams short. And so all those things, and somebody will say, no, but I used to love to, to put, you know, I'm a wire together and mix them. And already you can see that this girl is, 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 is headed to be on the path of being an engineer. But, you know, as time goes, then you quickly realize to say, well, that dream was cut short. So those are some of the, the, the barriers there. Okay. And you talk about projects mm. that a number of you were doing, you know, not in one space. What kind of projects are, are these that then you then say, let's get together and put together what we've been doing? What is that? So we had a lot of um, digital literacy skills because that's the fundamental. You start from there, right? So you, from your basic, what is a computer, yeah. right? So introduce them to, you know, the mouse, the, the actual hardware. What does the software do? How do the two relate, the hardware and the software? Okay, and the fun stuff that they can do with computers, right? So you're teaching that. Then you take it a step further to say, hey, did you know that this computer can do a lot more than just type, you know, or play games on it? You literally can make your own game. So now you're teaching them um, coding and programming, right? So come up with some of your own solutions in your community, uh, using technology, mm. right? So now we're involved in things like technovation, um, you know, mentoring girls to come up with apps and compete with other girls across the globe, mm. um, you know, so that gave them exposure. You're also talking about uh, having women in ICT forums. We're getting together as women. We're talking about the journeys. We're also talking about what needs to be done. So mm. now these concerted efforts now, they're all happening in silos. But now when you come together and you sit down and you say, let's have a structure. And, and for me, I believe collaboration is key. Mm. So what I'm thinking and what the next person is thinking and we happen to be in the same space can become so much bigger when we put it together. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so we, we get into the same space, we're working on, on similar projects. Is, is there stuff that we've built is there stuff that uh, the the women have built that's been taken out and 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 com- made commercial, made uh, they become impactful? Is there anything that you you could give as examples? I'm actually thinking specifically of the women that have gone on to start their own startups in the Fantastic. technology field. Mm. So they wouldn't have been able, I suppose, to do that without that mentorship and also without, like I said, that hand holding yeah. to then say you can do this. Don't let the idea die in your mind. Yeah. You know, take the necessary steps to, you know, see it through to fruition. And and then founder and training director, digital learning. Um, you've yeah. done this for a for a long time, and you're yeah. saying your passion is to create uh, 21st digital natives. How is it going? And could you describe for us what it looks like? 
Looking good, mm -hmm. looking good. And I'm so excited. It's because now people are becoming more and more technologically aware and also to a certain degree, the generation that is now the youth is they are basically digital natives. Yeah. So they're born technologically adept. Their, 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 their mindset is towards, you know, give me a cell phone and I'll show you how to really use it. You know, my daughter is primary example of that and how old <laughs> she's 11 <laughs> she's 11 and she teaches you stuff and she's like but did you not know and i'm yeah. like wow okay yeah you know so that's really important because now fair enough they're technologically adept but they need the professional skills that the, the job market is looking for that yeah. the global work talent pipeline is looking for and so they that's not just being able to tinker around with stuff there's a whole lot more to it it's, it's understanding the business elements you know, that go with, 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 with um, you know, creating, innovating, right? You also need to understand uh, things like your EQ, right? They say EQ is now the new IQ. Mm. Uh, so you need to understand how things like emotional intelligence, you know, come into to, to the fray, how um, your critical thinking skills, your ability to do, to have good judgment, lead a team, all those things are what industry is looking for. Right. And that's the stuff that you can't learn out of a textbook. It's actually a lived mm. experience. So mm. coming into the digital learning center, we then create um, those opportunities Opportunities for them to get the, the the technical skills that they need, but on the same token, also get the stuff that they need to go out with into the market. Mm. And then the um, the Bulawayo Tech Hub. I'm excited about this. The technical and you know, your technical and yeah. innovation director there, yeah. and you've been since 2020. Yeah. Talk to me about that space. What do you do in that space? Maybe let me just start off from where we started from, yeah. because there's a whole. It's it's a rich story. So it started off as a physical, not as a, as a virtual um, space. Uh, so it was just a meetup in the heart of COVID, right in the heart of COVID. And we had people who are from Bulawayo all coming together and saying, hey, you know, uh, we're tech people. What can we do? You know, here's the COVID uh, pandemic. COVID I thought Bulawayo was fast asleep. You mean you do the stuff? <laughs> yeah, we do the stuff, Trevor. <laughs> we do the stuff. Mm. We do the stuff. And so, we, you know, we got together and started having conversations because what else could you do during COVID yeah. except have conversations, yeah. right? So, um, you know, it started off as that. And, you know, we started to hear feedback to say, hey, but why don't we, you know, have a, a direct intervention you know, towards some of these things instead of just having, you know, talk shows. And so now I'm proud to say um, Bulawayo Tech Hub has evolved into a physical co-working space right in the heart of Bulawayo uh, in the CBD. And this is basically a space where, uh, you know, young innovators, young business uh, startup owners can come in have access to affordable uh, space for them to be able to sit down, do their work, an affordable space for them to be able to meet their clientele. Because let's face it, nobody's going to come to you, you know, back of beyond somewhere, mm. you know, mm. nobody's coming there, right? Your clients want to meet you somewhere convenient for them, right? And also to have that, um, you know, that credibility to say, I know where to find you mm. when I need you, mm. right? So they have access to that, access to Wi-Fi. And then also the meetups now continue, but now physically. Wow. So now we're able to actually incubate that talent and to a certain degree accelerate it, mm. right? And bring in mentors, Trevor, such as yourself. We'd love to see you in the space. Come through. Why not? Why yeah. not? Why not? Come through to the space and, you know, they let them hear the stories from those that have, you know, walked the path before. And I feel like that's, I'm so excited about this because I feel like there's a lot that is going to come out from, mm. from that space. So you've just been running for... Uh, uh, since 2020. Since 2020. And there's a uh, MyBiz space. Where yes. does that sit within the hub? Right. So MyBiz space is the literal business side of things, which ah. is where they sit and they pay for the, the either a dedicated desk or a hot desking facility or even a virtual office. So we will handle your mail for you. We will ensure that, you know, your clients through a VoIP system find you wherever you are and that type That's of thing. That's smart. Yeah. Yeah, and to make sure that the business, your business is running whether you're in the space or not. And it's being used. And it's being it's used. It's busy. It's busy. Yeah. yeah. And, and I read somewhere that you're connecting them to, uh, to, to, to business uh, mentors and that kind of stuff. Yes. Can you talk about that? Yes, absolutely. So we have, like I said, the same group of people that started the conversation now coming in to say, what more can mm. we do? Mm. And so they're scattered all over the world and they're coming in to then say, hey, uh, we'd like to have you know, a, a, a little workshop or a little webinar, depending on where they are, on, you know, 
startups what do, what 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 do you, how do you know whether your startup is viable at what point do you look for funding um you know what what is the concept of equity how important is it to your business uh what is the the, the, the legislation surrounding your, your your registration your company registration where do you go to register you know all those type of things and of course some technical workshops so those that are in the cloud uh, space would come in and then say hey you know these are the opportunities that are available mm. for cloud engineers for example and that sort of thing and so it's so important because ultimately what we want is for these startups to thrive. Yeah. yeah. So we're doing everything in our power to ensure that we create a space that allows for that to happen. Mm. Vicky, we'll take a, a, a break here. Um, when we come back, I'm going to ask you to showcase some of these startups, if there are any, um, that have been successful. So please don't go away. Join us uh, on the other side. Don't use social media for entertainment purposes only. There, there is so much. There's a wealth of knowledge that just comes from attending a 30-minute webinar, taking a 30-minute course. Welcome back to our conversation with Vicky Ngumalo. So, Vicky, you've excited me. You have created this ecosystem where uh, young ladies, uh, young, young, uh, the girl child getting into the STEM, excited, knowing what's happening, young people coming in, working in this space. How long before we actually see the bread coming out of the oven um, in terms of these are the startups that have come out of this uh, ecosystem? couple of months, Trevor. Give yeah. it a couple of months. Um, the space is new. The startups are new. Yeah. But by no means does it mean that their energy is low. Yeah. So we're so excited also to be working, you know, with those startups. And definitely, like I said, with the mentorship uh, from the community that we're getting, uh, we're expecting fireworks really soon. Mm. So let's let me go to you. Yeah. You said when we started that uh, you can be what you can't, didn't see? Yes. Is that yes, what you said? Yes, you, you can't be what you can't see. What did you see from who that made you decide to do what you're doing? Yeah. So there's a story. I um, love stories. <laughs> I love stories. So Let's there's a them. story. Um, mm. This lady, I think, I only got to tell her a couple of years back about the impact that she had in my life. She who didn't realize. Who is this lady? We love her names. Name. Yes, Florence Paswana. Uh, Florence Paswana. She was uh, uh, at PPC. Uh, uh, as the IT manager some some years back, some years back. And uh, how I met her was very interesting. So uh, I had volunteered to join the Computer Society of Zimbabwe, Bulawayo chapter, again, gravitating towards where technology discussions are being held. And so she happened to be there. And what they needed was a committee to sort of uh, revive the Bulawayo chapter, me being me. Mm -hmm. You raised your up. hand. Uh, and luckily for me, so did Florence's hand and, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, my other colleagues that we worked together for some time, Janet Kahari, Dutu Zikwebu, and Rumtiti. And so, you know, and so it began. And she was more motherly to me uh, with my frustrations about saying, but why don't girls want to do this? And, you know, do they know that women like you are in positions of power in an ICT, you know, uh, a department? And, you know, and she'd say to me, look, Sometimes it's not about, um, you know, you know, the frustration and saying there's few of you. Maybe it's about showing them, you know. And so this was a volunteer position. So we volunteered. We got as many other, you know, ICT professionals to join us, uh, you know. And then we started, you know, then saying, let's have more women coming in. Mm. And during my conversations with Florence, she would always say, I want you to understand that IT evolves. The field that you are in requires that you dedicate yourself to continuous professional development. Mm. So essentially what I'm saying is I'm still learning mm. and I will continue to learn probably till the day I die mm. because IT evolves at warp speeds. Mm. Um, it's not waiting for anybody. So it's either you sink or swim. Mm. And in understanding that, then I quickly realized to say, okay, how many of us as women with the responsibilities that you have, because as you grow older, you know, more responsibilities, yeah. you know, you take on more responsibilities. Your parents are aging. You have to look after them. You get married. You have kids. You know, it's, it's, it's a whole mixed bag. And then you have your career, which you're trying to advance. So with all that put in one, how many women then would say, 
you know. I can do this. We're, we're going to do it long hours, you know, early mornings, late nights, you know. Um, and so then it started to make sense. So you see sometimes that hand-holding that I was telling you about and that, you know, mindset shift, it played a huge a huge part in my life because she she encouraged me. She, she said to me, look, uh, continue on this path. If you're passionate about it, then it means you'll find your purpose. And eventually I did several years later. So it's all thanks to Do you think you found your purpose? I think I have. Because I strongly believe, Trevor, that passion without purpose is dead. You've, you, can have as, you can be as passionate as, as you want to be, but without the purpose, if it lacks the purpose, what are you being passionate What's for? What's your purpose, uh, Vicky? Yeah, um, community service. Okay. I didn't know it. If you had told me about this years ago to say this is what I'd be doing, I would have thought you were crazy. But now I've quickly realized I enjoy helping. Yeah, I enjoy helping. I enjoy being in spaces where I can render that help. I enjoy learning so I can help. You know, so it's for me, it, it just comes naturally, you know, to put myself in a space where I can say, hey, here's my little bit of knowledge. You know, do with it what you will. Where, where do you get your satisfaction from? Where do you get the kick from? I get the kick when somebody calls me to say, Vicky, thank you. Wow. That's it. You know, for me, it's Vicky, thank you. You pointed me in the right direction, and this is where I'm at. So before you met uh, Paswan, you said, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, where, where did you go to school? Right. So Vicky, born and bred, Goblawayo. Yeah. Uh, did my education, Goblawayo. Where? Uh, Masia Pambili Primary School. Okay. And then uh, moved to Girls College, and then from there, made several mistakes about my career, that, mm. that lack of mentorship, mm. right? So I made several mistakes. One point, dabbled into accounting, left it, you know, until eventually IT, I said to myself, oh, something as basic well, as an you, ICT qualification go, was Why it. did you go into accounting? The A-level combination, okay. management of business, accounting, English. Mm. Naturally, mm. you know, I was telling myself, well, I must be a commercials person, you know, and then only to discover, no, <laughs> I am not. Um, and you found this through doing, falling and picking yourself up. Yes. Lots of falling, lots of picking myself up, lots of not knowing at some point where I was going, you know. And I feel like sometimes when you fail, fail forward. Failure shouldn't be something that you're so afraid of to the point of not, that, that it, it kind of, you freeze and you don't, you know, progress forward. So I did the very first qualification, which was an ICDL qualification. Right. right. So the International Computer Driving License. Expensive back then it was. Uh, and a lot of people were like, but why would you, you know, go into that? But then I figured this is a skills gap that exists in my life. I think I like the internet, but I don't quite know what it is. And I don't know how to use a computer. So it started from there. And then, of course, it just spiraled into, you know, this and that. And, and eventually here we are. And... I am so happy in this space. Oh, it's good. Yeah, definitely good. do not regret walking down this path. Mm. Yeah, so what, what other qualifications do you hold um, right. apart from the international computer driving license? Right. The first time I would look at that is, they have driving licenses? What? what, what? <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, <laughs> it is a driving license. You can drive a computer once right. you're, okay. <laughs> once you're done with that. But I want to make sure people <laughs> are aware out there that they are computer driving yeah. licenses. Yeah. So many mm. things. So um, I then started to acquire skills that industry needed. Mm -hmm. Such so, as? Such as A+, plus, which yeah, okay. is your, your hardware technicians. So and where do you get that from? You get that from Spaces College okay. through City and Guilds. Right. Right. Then you do N+, plus as well. So that's your networking. So now Where you do you get that from? Again, City and City and Guilds. Right. Right. So these are all, it's, it's a UK-based um, City and Guilds, is a, it's, a, it's a UK yes, it is. Uh, licensing qualifying yes, it body. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, from then on, uh, and also there's also Comshia, so depending on where you you, you want to write and certify, eventually ended up doing um, what we call computer ICT systems and support. So now you're understanding not only just the ICT systems, but how do you engage with the client? So it's no longer about you as the technician. It's about how do I make the client experience you know, as full, as rich as possible. Now, mm -hmm. of course, it has translated to something else now. It's now uh, what we call UX UI design, where now you are focusing 100% on how does my client interact with, with the website and in their interaction with the website? What experience are they getting? Are they happy with it? Is the interface friendly? So, you know, it translated into that. And then uh, digital transformation as well is something that I did with CXO. 
Um, so that's basically a certification that where you're saying, look, you need to understand the people, the processes, as well as the tools that you need to then work with businesses to say, hey, for your non-digital products, how do we digitize this? And how does this affect your clients? So there's always that emphasis on, you know, don't be, you know, uh, uh, um, thinking about yourself as the organization, but also think about your clients because at the end of the day, they bring in the bacon. Yeah. So, yeah, interesting journey. Um, what, still what, do, what would you say, interesting journey, still learning, mm. what would you say to the young girl child out there mm. watching you right now yeah. who wants to be like Vicky, who wants to be in the space that you are without making the mistakes that Vicky made? Definitely, again, expose yourself. Yeah. Um, and by expose yourself, I mean research a lot on different parts. Get curious. Let's not use social media for entertainment purposes only. And I, the, those that know me know that I, I say like this that. A lot. Can you say that louder <laughs> to those that are at the back? At the back. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, don't use social media for entertainment purposes only. There, there is so much. There's a wealth of knowledge that just comes from attending a 30-minute webinar, taking a 30-minute course. You know, there's so much that you will learn. And also, it will actually help you to identify you know, people that can help you on your journey. So many communities of practice out there that are giving off their time to say, hey, we've sat down and we've seen that this is the global standard for, for you know, how we want to perform as professionals. So why not give out this information to aspiring upstarts, you know? So those are the things that I would give advice is to get curious, identify people that can walk this journey with you and reach out to them. That's Tell me, what have you gotten the most from your parents, from your upbringing? What did you get the most from mom and dad and, yeah? Daughter of a teacher and a certain gentleman, uh, and he's going to laugh. Who's, when who's your dad? This. What's your dad's name? My dad's name is Vincent Pugh. Okay. Um, a certain a certain uh, man that uh, used to work in an X-ray department of a of, of a of a medical uh, building, and I say this because I didn't did know for the longest time what he really did, mm -hmm. only to discover that those people are called radiographers. So you see, there's a lot of learning. <laughs> There's a lot of learning, uh, you know, that kind of happens. So in our household... Um, There's a lot of learning if you're yeah. curious. If you're curious. If you're curious. If you've got a teachable spirit. Yes. If you step out every day and saying, I'm a student of life and I'm going to learn. Yeah. And it, it appears you, you, you're that kind of person. I love learning, Trevor. I love learning. And education is taken very seriously. Like I said, my mom's a teacher. Right. So this so, radiographer? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So this, I was to later learn that that's what you call him. I was like, oh, okay, great. I've learned something new. Wonderful. Um, so mom and dad, education taken very seriously at home. Uh, you don't sit idle. You don't. So my brother and I, uh, because we, we were two, unfortunately, my brother is late, but um, it was taken very seriously. Don't do your homework. You know what happens, yeah. you know, all of that. And then can we have some seriousness in your life? Can we know, you know, and it's, it's the same sort of thing that happens now that we're doing with this generation, you know, of kids that we have is to say, hey, you know, at least get the education, but right. We're not mm. stopping you from pursuing whatever it is you want to pursue. Did you tell us what educated. your mom was doing, by the way? Yes, she's a, she was she's a, a teacher. teacher. Okay. She's a teacher. So mm. hence the education yeah, bit. Yeah. And hence my love for it as yeah, well, because yeah. Girls in STEM Trust identifies as an education yeah. non-profit yeah. for that reason. Yeah. 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 So let, let's go to another exciting space, yeah. um, which I which I really like when I my, my my eyes lit up when I get there. SAP Africa Code Week. Yes. You've been doing this since 2017. Yeah. Unpack to us. What is this? All right. So let me start off by explaining. So Africa Code Week is an initiative by SAP and partners, right? So partners, UNESCO, Youth Mobile. SAP, Irish. the internet, the conglomerate. Yes, yeah. yes, the conglomerate. And then they got together with UNESCO, uh, Youth Mobile, Irish Aid, Camden Education Trust, uh, and a bunch of other partners. And across the African continent to then say, look, we want to expose the youth on the African continent to their first line of code mm. using a programming language, um, your programming tool called Scratch. Now, those that have interacted with the Scratch interface will understand pretty much that it's similar to how you put Lego blocks together. So you're teaching computational thinking and sequence and logic by putting together blocks of code to then create a game and, you know, create animations and get things moving on the screen, right? So currently, it's now the, the, the biggest uh, digital skills initiative on the African continent. And so... Wow. We operate in our respective countries, all, uh, almost all 54, but currently mm -hmm. I think we, we have about over 41 participating countries. Um, 
we operate as ambassadors. So in each and every country, there is an ambassador who furthers, you know, the interests of this, uh, you know, program. And so through that, we are able to then reach kids in different areas. We don't really mind where. It could be an orphanage. It could be a rural school. It mm. could be, uh, you know, a school in the peri urban or in a mine, wherever. So we go where, you know, we can go to ensure that the coding is done. And and you have um, under that umbrella Zimbabwe yeah. Women Empowerment Program. Yes. Speak to me about about that. For me to speak to you about that, I'd have to speak to you about the Women Empowerment Program without sure. the Zimbabwe in front mm. of it. So, mm. what Africa Code Week also does is also equip trainers. So Africa Code Week happens annually, annually. for a week. Yes. Okay. Roughly for a week, but of course, because of the demand, yeah. it's usually more than a okay. week. Okay. So the Women Empowerment Program is then. Uh, a way in which Shall Africa we do Code this, Week Vicky? does that. I'm going, to, I'm going to hold you there, yeah. and we're going to come back and talk about uh, yeah. the uh, Women Empowerment Program. Let's, right. take, a Let's break. take a break. Uh, please join us after this break, where we're going to be talking about uh, the Women Empowerment Program. Don't you go away. See you on the other side. The generation that's going to probably plug into the economy and probably grow it is the generation that we have now. Imagine getting free access to the Newsday, the Standard, the Zimbabwe Independent and the Weekly Digest for a full month. Well, you can. And all you need to do is download the Newsday e-reader app on Google Play Store or scan the Newsday QR code in any of the AMH print publications and start enjoying the quality content. Welcome back to our conversation with Vicky, Victoria Ngomal. So Vicky, you are unpacking to us the Women Empowerment Program. Yes. What is it about? What does it look like? What do you do? All right. Awesome. So I was speaking about how Africa Code Week yeah. uh, has several, under uh, under its umbrella, several other programs. Yeah. Right? And one of them is the Women Empowerment Program, specifically targeted for uh, African female educators mm -hmm. who are teaching computer science and STEM subjects. The reason for this is to basically build capacity uh, in terms of leadership, so having them taking up leadership positions within their, uh, you know, respective uh, uh, schools and communities as far as uh, computer science and STEM is concerned. And then also, you know, allowing them to have this professional development uh, experience uh, where now they get to meet other women. So obviously the collaboration that is now happening across borders because it involves African female educators and uh, the, 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 the common denominator of why they are there is because they're educators. Mm. So then we are able to then, you know, walk them through this. It, it's a six-week program, by the way. And um, I've been privileged to be a moderator of that program. And uh, through that, uh, it was uh, then, you know, there's a progression model within that program. So through that, we were able to then say, hey, let's have a Zimbabwean spin-off to this. Mm. Um, something that now relates to Zimbabwean female educators. And, uh, you know, the challenges that they face, the, the barriers that they have to overcome are things that they'd like to see done differently. What are those things? What right. are the barriers? What is it that they would want to see done so, differently, Vicky? Yeah. Uh, so it's keeping girls in school. Ah. That's, that's, that one is unanimous. So it's keeping our girls in school first and foremost in order for us to then reach them and then say, hey, this is the education as far as STEM is concerned and this is how your future would look if you pursued this. So it's keeping them in school due to several reasons, whether dropping out due to teenage pregnancy, early marriages, uh, lack of funding at home, or you know whatever, whatever it is, but it's the keeping the girls in school that um, is, is a huge, huge challenge. Mm -hmm. And um, also getting the girls to understand the mentorship that they are trying to offer. So they will then say, look, we're giving up of our time. Um, and then we now need the girls to show up yeah. <laughs> to yeah. that space to yeah. get that mentorship, right? So, yeah, it's quite a lot. And also just, you know, the technical um, um, aspects, the technology aspects of that program are wonderful because they integrate now with allowing our female educators in Zimbabwe to then be in line, you know, with, with uh, a government's drive towards inclusive education, mm. government's drive towards uh, blended learning. So, you know, now they're they they're getting the skills through this program to then say, hey, how do I hold a lesson on Zoom? 
how do I hold a lesson uh, using Google Classroom? You know, how do I use the Scratch programming, which is the, the you know the, the at the heart of Africa Code Week? How do I use that to formulate a lesson plan? You know, all those things are now the tools that our female educators are getting through this program. How happy are you with the space? You, when we started, you're saying uh, it's it's about seeing what you want to become, and mm -hmm. if you can't see it, you can't become it. Um, are, are we seeing the change? Is the change discernible? If not, what more still needs to be done? I'm going to sit on the fence with this one. Okay. The conversation, definitely we cannot deny, is being had in several spaces where we are saying we need more female mentors, we need more people to come into the fold. The conversation is happening. We are seeing a lot more female mentors stepping out, giving off their time, resources, and energy to impart their skills and their knowledge and their journeys to these young women. Mm. But, however, it's still not enough. Okay. There's a lot more that needs to be done to say, how do we reach the rural girl? Mm. How do we get to her? Let her not get a shock when mm. she comes to university. Mm. Is there still a divide and, there? Yeah. There still is. There's still a divide there. It exists. And I think it's... It's real. It's real. And it, it generally has to do with, when you look at the infrastructure as well. Now, not to discredit all the efforts that are being made to ensure that, you know, um, that demographic is being, you know, reached. There's still a lot more, I feel, that we can do in terms of then saying we want to have the rural girl being at par with her urban counterpart, mm. you know, because they will go to the same university. It won't matter mm. which school you went mm. to, but they will mm. meet at university. One will be able to type the assignment, one will not. Mm. Mm. It, what, what, what would this space look like for you to feel we've made an impact? On, on the business side, what would you need? On, on government side and society side, what would you need? Support on both sides. Okay. Support in terms of the funding, definitely. Okay. The funding that is required to get the infrastructure going. Right. Um, and then also from there, once the infrastructure is there, the training. The training needs to happen. So you don't just only train the, 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 the you know, the, your target beneficiaries. You also train the people that must impart, mm. the people that stay in the lives of this beneficiary, mm. right? So you mm. equip them. So there's a lot of that. And then in terms of the... The, 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 the policies that government has put in place, those are actually brilliant. When you look at Education 5.0, the new inclusive education policy, you also look at um, the, uh, the, the, the policy to do with um, access and things like that. We've seen community information centers being put up, you know, through the Ministry of ICT and Portras. So all these things are showing that, you know, we are trying to, to work at getting, you know, our, our communities in that digital headspace, which is really, really important. So the funding definitely from the private sector to then say, hey, as part of our CSR, how can we then, you know, plug into the education function to say these are the same people. And remember, you are investing in this, in this talent pipeline. Yeah, yeah. This is your future employee Absolutely. in years to come. So if we view it from that point of view to say, hey, um, how are we investing in the people that are going to invest in this organization mm. in years to come? I feel we'll be able to spot a lot of talent, mm. harness it, groom it. Mm. You, you have done, I don't know what this is, Google Associate Cloud Engineer in 2021. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> I'm asking that with the bigger thing that says, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Yeah. Still learning. Um, <laughs> definitely in the next five years. Um, but these are certifications. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the internet being, you know, mm -hmm. possessing a wealth of knowledge and, and, and being an enabler really in one's life. And so this was basically a, um, program that Google did in partnership with, uh, Plural Site and Andela. And basically they put out a call to say, you know, those that would like to, I think there were three main tracks. Those that would like to be either a cloud engineer, go into the mobile app development space, um, and um, yeah, I think it was mobile app development space. Put in your applications. We'll avail the, we'll unlock the platform for you. Usually you have to pay for these courses. Mm. But if you go through this program and you apply, free of charge, you are able to then get access to those type of uh, programs and then obviously get the, 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 the resources and the material that you need to sit for the exam. Right. So whether you sit for the exam or not is another story, but you still get the knowledge yeah. um, you know, that you require. So 
it's really, really exciting to find yourself in spaces like that because then now you become part of a cohort of people from across the globe mm. all doing this and you're getting experiences, you're, you're getting leads on, you know, what type of jobs are out there for this type of course. Uh, after this, is there anything else that I need to do? How do I progress, mm. you know? And and for me, I feel like it, it's, it's always an opportunity to learn. So mm. when you ask me and you say to me, in five years Where time, are you going to be? In our language, our tech language, I, I say to my, I think of myself as being in constant beta, mm. which means you're constantly testing improving. yourself and improving yeah. yourself yeah. And, and refining yourself. And so in five years time, because once you come into the space, Trevor, of um, being in technology, technology will render you obsolete if you stop learning. Mm. Where, where do you sit with um, regarding um artificial intelligence mm. uh, coming with the uh, uh, chat GDP. Uh, what chat is GPT. It? Yeah. Yeah. Um, wh where do you sit with that? I mean, they, there's a lot of excitement about yeah. what chat uh, GDP and uh, mm. artificial intelligence can do. Yeah. Uh, there is concern that it's going to come and get our jobs. It's going to come and write stories for journalists and so forth. Mm. Uh, can we can can technology do without human beings or AI requires human beings to get better? Where do you sit? You've just said it. There's nothing to fear. Um, when you think about these technologies, they didn't invent themselves, did they? Yeah. And and so I'm excited about artificial intelligence primarily because when you look at business and you look at industry and you look at the ease of doing business. The, the aim is always, where's the bottom line? Well, how does this affect the bottom line? How, how do we um, have a turnaround time so fast that we are still able to satisfy the client and maximize the profit, right? So when you look at it from that perspective and say artificial intelligence is now able to unlock that for you, because remember, you must give it the parameters in which it must operate in. That's the human yeah. that is doing that. Yeah. So I know there's a lot of uh, debate around even just the, you know, the other 4IR technologies that are there, you know, yeah. your robotics and yeah. so on, to say, ah, but now if the robot is now going to do my job, then what happens to me? Well, <laughs> and COVID-19 proved this, didn't yeah. it? To say, if you can automate a system, I think we don't have use for you, Trevor, mm. you may, you know. <laughs> so the thing is, is then it, it goes back to then saying the digital skills, the, lit, the digital literacy skills, the 21st century skills that you need to learn. We need to bring, you know, our people up to be at par with that. So talk to me about where the world is, yeah. the international community as far as mm -hmm. the industry is concerned and where we sit. Mm -hmm. How big is the gap? What is required from, from us as a country and the industry mm -hmm. to benefit from the revolution that is happening, I think, with us on the sidelines? Is that a fair comment? It's a fair comment, Trevor. And I think one that needs to have a lot more of a discussion. In fact, we need a whole nother co another conversation <laughs> right. to just talk about it. But yeah. I will speak about it from the perspective of innovation. Right. Innovation is, is, is really critical and crucial. But now when you look at innovation, you've got to ask yourself to say, okay, with all these startups that are coming up, because these are innovators, really. Yes. That's what they are. They are a community yeah. of innovators. So how is that ecosystem for startups being enabled? How is it structured? Who is supporting it? So this is where now we start asking the question. So they may innovate, but do they have the access to the capital to see that innovation through? They may innovate. Do they have the access to the markets? to reach the intended You're client. asking big questions. And yeah. what's what's your answer to those questions out of 10 as a country? Where are we? Because I asked yeah. because, you know, we had um, very passionate uh, Ryan Katai yes, sitting Ryan. where you're sitting right now. Yeah. And his, 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 his frustration was palpable. Yeah. How, how, what, what's your levels of uh, satisfaction or frustration as far as where we are in terms of building that ecosystem to be able to support more of Ryan Katai? Five. Five out of 10. Five wow. out of ten. The policies, yeah. you know, support the innovation. Yeah. Um, but now, like I've said, without the funding, yeah. without the right, you know, market, yeah. and also, should I say, the environment yeah. as well, yeah. to allow these startups to thrive, then mm. essentially what, it, what, is, what are we doing, yeah. right? So it's really, really important to then say, 
let's 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 be intentional about our interventions mm. to then you know support the ecosystem mm. um otherwise they will just merely stop innovating because then the, the question will be there's no use mm. there's or they no will market. go somewhere else or they go somewhere else yeah. Yeah. you know with that a uh, uh, homegrown product you know mm. which could really plug into other so we, we i think you need to be you 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 would essentially need a multi stakeholder approach to this it's not just and it's one not entity. happening at the moment it's not happening as much and as you would like know to. because you are in this right place. Yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> so you know you 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 it's really important to get um, the private sector in to say okay you're innovating how do we take this innovation and plug it this in This is a space where I've, I I'm this is my um ignorant view of it Right This is a space where I actually think that the older generation like me mm -hmm. need to sit at the feet of the young people Thank you to be guided Thank you uh reverse mentoring because we don't understand this I mean yeah. you've been speaking all this uh Big stuff, and I've been hearing you sing your, your your lips move, not understanding <laughs> what you're saying. This is a time for us to yeah. sit at the feet of the young people and say, "What is it that you need yeah. for you to operate at maximum right. for the benefit of the country?" Absolutely. Is is that a reasonable thing to to say? Very reasonable, Trevor, and I'll tell you why. Um, the generation that's going to probably plug into the economy and probably grow it is the generation that we have now. Yeah. So what we have now is we're catching, you know, your generation at the tail end of things. But not to say that there are not any lessons that we can get from this generation, mm. right? So, you know, when we speak about generation X, Y, yeah. and Z, the differences between those would be let's get what we can get out of you in mm. terms of how were things done, how did they work, why did they work, how did you overcome A, B, and C, and, you know, and what advice would you give? We take that. Then we say, okay, this is where we are in the, in the scheme of things. This is what the world looks like now. This is what the world is going to look like. And, you know, merge mm. the two. Mm. And so for me, I always believe in order for you to know where you're going, please do understand where yeah, you come, where you come from. from. Right. Absolutely. We've been too serious for a long time, yeah, isn't we have, it? Shall we, we have, have fun? Let's have some fun. Too. Let's have fun. Right. So, fun questions. Yeah. What's your morning routine like? Uh, if I wake up and I'm breathing, that's good. <laughs> yeah. We call that a win. It's a blessing <laughs> that we take for granted, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Good. And, and that's a win. Uh, but definitely, please let me have my coffee, then we can function. Okay. That's yeah. good. Um, book or movie? Movie. Movie. Yes, movie. What the kind of movie? Uh, definitely would have to be, and don't say this is cliche, but definitely sci-fi or crime, crime investigation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, favorite song? Favorite song. I I love Neo Soul. Uh, so it would have to be my all-time favorite would be Ndawoyami by Zama Jove. Mm. Mm. That's a that's a lovely one. Yeah. Uh, who is your role model and why? Role model, Mama. Oh. Wow. <laughs> why? Mama. Um. My mom is a very strong, resilient woman, firm when she needs to be, tender when she needs to be. And I think there's parts of me that are like that. Mm -hmm. um, and she's played a really, really big influence in my life by being my greatest support and also being my greatest skeptic. Mm. So she goes from one spectrum to the other. And I feel that's an amazing um, set of skills to have. Mm. Favorite holiday destination? Mm. Um, whew. It would have to be the lovely Victoria Falls. Wow, that's a lovely yeah. place. It's a good yeah. place. And your favorite app? My favorite, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok. Addicted. Wow, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, this is just the right uh, generation. Uh, yeah. what, a, what an amazing conversation. You've been honored with uh, Border Appointments and Awards. Are you able to share which ones? Yes, definitely. Um, so let's start with being recognized uh, in the CIO Africa magazine in 2021 as Wonderful. one of the top 30 most influential women in tech in Africa. So thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. And um, I also serve on the advisory board of Camden Education Trust in Ireland. And uh, basically, yeah, our job is to advise the board, but it also allows me to get a fuller understanding of what the education function looks like across the globe. And that's, that's amazing. And the Computer Society of Zimbabwe, Com you sit on? No, Computer no. Society of Zimbabwe, I served uh, okay. in the Bulawayo Chapter Executive Committee okay. um, for that. But I stepped down in 2021, obviously mm -hmm. allow new blood to come in. Come in. Um, also... New blood giving up, you know, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> We 
love books on this show, so yeah. we're not going to let you go before you share okay. with our book loving audience out yeah. there. It's three books that you've read that you that have made a huge impact on you. Let's start with Richard Carlson. Mm-hmm. Don't sweat the small stuff. Wow, okay. it's all small stuff. Your life is not an emergency. Hmm. Yeah, and don't take uh, time on relaxation. Don't. Don't, you know, procrastinate on relaxation. It's important. It's important. Very important. Mental health issues, work-life balance. Yes. Really important. Mm. Uh, second uh, book, I'm a lover of uh, Ndebele literature. Okay. Uh, I actually did uh, Ndebele Zulu. It was Ndebele Zulu at the time for my O-levels. So enjoyed um, Agula Zulu Mklaben by Ubabu Enes Koko. I enjoyed that. But you see, I enjoyed the book because the characters were were really interesting and engaging, but there was a lesson to that. Right. There is literal translation to that book is there is no heaven on earth. Mm. Right. So we learned a lot of things from there. Third book. Yeah. Uh the seven um uh uh habits. Habits. Mm. Stephen yes. Covey. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. has to be. Um the reason being is we have the same twenty four hours mm. as everybody. And yet there are all these people doing out here doing all these amazing things. And I said, clearly they must be, they must <laughs> know must something I don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's something I don't, or maybe you can choose extra time. Like, I'm not sure. Yeah, so so that the take the key takeaways for me, you know, from that book was definitely uh, strategy. So strategy, you know, you start with the end in mind. Yeah. So be able to see all the steps from the beginning to the end before you even start, right? Fantastic. And uh, always creating that win-win situation. And mm. I feel that's enabled me to be able to have and maintain relationships with people, you know, for years. Because mm. you always, it's not about you winning all the time. No. Let's have other people do the winning as well. Wonderful. Yeah. Victoria, what a conversation. Um, you, we delighted that you were able to fly all the way from Mugulawayo yeah. to spend time with us. Uh, you have an amazing career. Thank you. Uh, you are in, in, in an inter- interesting space doing great stuff, uh, empowering the next generation, particularly our amazing uh, girl, uh, girl, girl, yeah. girl children. So thank you so much for creating the time to, to join us. We wish you the best and hopefully we'll be in to check in with you in about, what, five years' time to no. see where you are? No, check in with me next month. Trevor. Next month. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Vicky. Thank you. Uh, allow me to turn over now to our viewers who are all over the world who follow us on a weekly basis. We are out on YouTube, 7 a.m. Central African time every Monday. Uh, remember to subscribe, to like, and share so that you, you, you don't miss out. you get a notification when you subscribe. We have created a a uh, website for you where our podcasts sit uh, for all our conversations for your listening pleasure. We read your comments uh, on YouTube and on our uh, website and your suggestions on who should come uh, onto the program. Thank you so much. We appreciate your support. Until next time, cheers to you all.